Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio podcast with Ahmed Saqa Amini and Emil Ehsan Alexander Tarabi. The Islamic Renaissance is here and now. May the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon you all. My name is Ahmed, and I'm a physicist, a poet, and deeply committed to sharing the fundamental connection between science and spirituality with our community and beyond. Ihsan is a spiritual coach, writer, and speaker committed to the evolution of consciousness within the global community. You are listening to the Soul of Islam radio podcast. It is a weekly program dedicated to sharing the deeper dimension of Islam and supporting your personal growth and spiritual development. My name is Ahmed and I'm here with my good friend and brother Ihsan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for consistently supporting and sharing with your friends. And most importantly, thank you for tuning in, for tuning into your own heart and soul and into programming that inshallah will facilitate and empower you in your personal and spiritual growth and development. Today's podcast is on the divine attribute known as Al Khaliq, the Creator. This very divine attribute is very significant in Islamic spirituality, in physics, and in its relationship with creation as a whole. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His attributes precede the entire existence or experience we call the cosmos. However, the attribute of Al-Khaliq has a very special reality before the initial singularity. It was that very attribute through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused nothing to be everything, which we call the creation or the universe. Through the attribute of Al-Khaliq, Allah gazed upon non-existence and to it said, Kun, be, and everything was. Infused with all of the other attributes such as mercy and compassion, Allah brought forth an ordered and structured universe with all of its constituents swimming in orbits in oceans of his manifested attributes. Allahumma salli ala Sayyid Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Everything that Allah has revealed is with divine purpose and there's a divine secret in everything, especially in Asma al-Husna. And each Asma al-Husna has its own unique gift to offer us with deeper introspection, with deeper contemplation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as al-Khaliq, the creator and the main point that I want to emphasize here is that Allah is the creator, meaning that he is continually creating. Creation was not a singular act that occurred and then Allah stopped creating. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continually creating. This means that in this moment, right now, right here, he is intentionally, willfully, consciously creating you. Think about that for a moment. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is right now willing you into conscious existence. His will supports you and sustains you, whether you're aware of it or not, whether you're a believer or not, whether you're grateful or not. In this moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is consciously giving you life, giving you time, giving you breath. In this moment, Allah is with you. Now, are you, are we with Allah? We're reflecting on this divine attribute of Al Khaliq. Realizing that Allah is creating us in every moment, that this creation cannot support itself, it cannot stand except with Allah's power continuously. So being mindful of the fact that Allah is creating you right here, right now, by will, by choice, by love, it's a beautiful opportunity and a doorway to being with Allah. Allah is with us. It's up to us to be with Allah. SubhanAllah, Brother Hassan. You know, the, the idea or just knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating us in this very moment, from the moment of birth, moment of conception, all the way to the moment of death, the moment of transition into the next world. Allah is constantly creating us. You know, and this is true physically, biologically, and chemically speaking. 
There's so many processes that are taking place inside of the human being as we speak. The human being is not the same. He's not the same he was a second ago. We are constantly changing. SubhanAllah, all point to the, the dynamic universe we are in. And when we look at the attribute of Al-Khaliq and we see its relationship uh, with language, we find more profound truths in there. Uh, when diving into the richness of the Arabic language, we see that Al-Khaliq has a profound connection with the Arabic root word Khalaqa. This root word contains the following subtle yet deep meanings, and, and those are to quantify or to measure accurately and precisely, to proportion one thing according to another, to determine the proper measure or proportion for something, to bring a thing into existence from non-existence, and lastly, to create something based on a pattern or model which one has devised. Subhanaka Allah, all of these meanings point towards the essence, the majesty, the ability of the Creator. He creates and fashions with perfection. You know, we see that khalq is attributed to and associated with accuracy, precision, measurement, patterns, and if anything, all of these meanings not only point towards the knowledge and wisdom of the divine, but they point to what we call science and mathematics. You know, as a physicist, I constantly find myself being confronted with how crucial accuracy and precision are in experimentation. You know, I deal with concepts such as pressure, energy, velocity, voltage, current, and more, and without having the ability to quantify the different kinds of physics, or rather without mathematics, our job as physicists would be impossible when it comes to communicating with the physical world. And in the same way, without the knowledge of the ordered laws of physics, mathematicians wouldn't be able to make any sense of their models, and physicists wouldn't be able to make sense of the nature of the physical world. The order that Allah brought forth into the universe, the order that He created at its moment of creation is science and mathematics. SubhanAllah Ahmad, MashaAllah. And science is an amazing opportunity for us to actually understand spirituality. You know, we often talk about this and the fact that science and spirituality are two sides of the same coin. They're sister sciences. And we know that in science and mathematics, the understanding of the physical world is so important with regards to matter and time. Yet on a deeper level, time itself is an illusion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating moment by moment. In every moment, all that exists is this present moment. There is no past, there is no future, there is no such thing as time. All that truly exists is now. And that means that Allah is creating moment by moment. Continuity is an illusion. We know that in movies, also known as motion picture, we have a series of still images that are played at such a speed to give the illusion of motion, the illusion of continuity. But in fact, there is no continuity. Each frame is an independent still image. It's the same with creation. And the past is only connected to the present and to the future in our minds. The past need not dictate the future. Your past need not dictate your future. The only thing that perpetuates the past into the present and then into the future is attachment. We have the capacity and the ability with development and with practice to learn to let go of past and to transcend time. This is the spiritual path, and it's the way of miracles. And a miracle is to become something new, to become something completely fresh and alive and new. And the entire purpose of Islam and spirituality and revelation and religion and development is to evolve, it's to continually change, as you were saying earlier, Ahmed. Everything is in a state of continual change, and we have the opportunity to flow with that change towards our divine destinies, towards our divine potential, towards the very reason and purpose that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. We can heal from the past. 
we can learn to let go of the past. We can forgive by transcending time, by rooting ourselves, anchoring ourselves in the present moment. And the attribute of al-khalik, understanding al-khalik, enables us, empowers us to do this. And the more that we are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that we allow ourselves and open ourselves to experience His divine presence, it invites, it awakens, it opens within us Allah's divine light and presence. And that then begins to heal. Allah's presence begins to heal us from our past, from our traumas, from our wounds, and cure us from fear of future as well. Subhanallah, wa la ilaha illallah. The, the makhluq, the insan, this creation, has to understand, is meant to understand Allah through the attribute of al-khaliq, so that he can detach himself from a thing called the future and a thing called the past. You know, these things are things of illusions. They are not real. As you said, Brother Hassan, what is real is present in the present moment. It is here and it is now. And such an understanding can give this makhluq, us, an awareness, a deeper awareness to what is inside the human heart. And al-insan, the human being, is, is a makhluq, like we said, a creation from within the creation and was entrusted with the divine spark to know the creator. Now, within the human being are the secrets of the entire universe. In the same way that a single drop contains what we need to know about the entire ocean, al-insan, the human being, is that particle of dust that contains everything that one needs to know about the cosmos. And when knowing about the ocean and the cosmos, one arrives at the knowledge of the divine the essence of the Creator stretches from His realm into the heart of man. It is a truth that is evident on all levels, even in language. We see that the root word stretches in the same manner. When we say, Al-Khaliq khalaq al-Makhluq The Creator created a creation. MashaAllah, Ahmed, and from this we can understand that by understanding also creation and the act of creation itself via the attribute of Al-Khalaq, the Creator, we can understand the deeper truth and purpose and reason for our existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I was a hidden treasure and wanted to be known. So, I created. I created. And beautifully you put there, Ahmed, how by learning to understand ourselves and look deep within our own beings and the secrets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us with, that we can find our way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the Divine Presence. Allah is not somewhere outside, somewhere out there in the physical universe. The physical universe doesn't even exist in reality. The physical universe exists in Allah's knowledge by His will. Yet there's a part of us that is connected that transcends the physical universe and is connected to the divine presence of Allah and that is the human heart. And hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Neither the heavens nor the earth can contain me save the heart of a believer. Al-Qalb al-Mu'min Your heart, your soul is the doorway into eternity beyond time and beyond physical creation. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in Laylatul Isra wal Miraj ascended beyond physical creation to a place where even the angels could not be present or they would be annihilated by divine light from Allah's presence. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Muhammad transcended entirely physical creation and reached to the divine presence of Allah Almighty. That capacity, that potential exists within your heart, the human heart. That divine secret is in your being. And to find Allah, it's time to begin turning inward. Begin looking inward. Learning to become present and still. To transcend time and to simply be with Allah. The ego personality, the ego-based consciousness needs time. It needs past and future to exist, to perpetuate itself. It's a conceptual construct. In the perfect present moment, in pure stillness, there can be no self. The mind is still and surrendered in a state of Islam. 
And this, of course, is the goal of Islam, to bring the self, the being, the entire being, the mind into a state of surrender. Hence the apex of salah, the apex of our prayer, is in sajda, when the forehead, when the mind is brought into surrender, into stillness, into peace and serenity. And hence there's also the hadith, that he or she who knows themselves is as one who knows their Lord. The path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through your own being, through self-knowledge, through self-awareness, through presence, through stillness, and through purifying the self of everything that is false, through purifying the self of its conceptual constructs, of its projected self-image that is based in time and space, the path to Allah is by transcending temporal identity. SubhanAllah, the entire existence, the entire purpose of existence, of the universe, of il insan, is, is clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the self and placed it inside of the universe so that it may come to realize with time, with the passage of time, that its sole purpose is to purify itself so that it can reflect the beauty and the reality inside the heart. The essence of the Creator is seen over and over in the Holy Qur'an. In Surah Al-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 12, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله الذي خلق سبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلموا أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله in this verse we see the essence of the creator he quantifies the number of heavens dimensions and aspects of and within the universe he also points towards the direction from which things originate from in surah al-mulk chapter 67 allah says bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim tabarak alladhi biyadihi al-mulk wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فرجع البصر هل ترى من فطور صدق الله العظيم In these beautiful ayats Allah assures us of his power of his control over his own dominion He shows us the origin of man and the universe when he says that he created death and life. SubhanAllah, the order here is profound. He created death before he created life. He created nothing before he created everything. He created to put creation within another, to be tested and challenged all, to see whom amongst his creation can achieve higher stations of perfection and excellence. He created the seven heavens, the seven layers, the seven dimensions, the seven realities, one upon the other. And he challenges man's intellectual and observational abilities to look and gaze upon the wonders of the universe to see if there is a single flaw, a challenge that has stood the test of time. The fact that such a challenge is proposed in the Qur'an means that the challenger, Allah, is absolutely certain and sure of his perfect creation, which in turn proves and shows that he is the creator. In response to this beautiful ayah, Rumi said, The sky, so beautiful and glorious, God said, Then turn thy gaze again towards it, as regards this roof of light. Don't be content with just one look. Look many times. See, are there any flaws? Since he has told you to look often at this excellent roof, examining it for flaws, know then how much discernment the dark earth needs. And subhanAllah, hence the absolute importance of surrender to divine will. Everything is by Allah's will as he wills. Your circumstances are not an accident. They're exactly as they must be. Your circumstances are a perfect reflection of creation to lead you to your greatest potential, your greatest possibility, to lead you to 
your divine destiny and your divine purpose to becoming what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for you to be. And through surrender, through letting go, through surrendering to Allah's will as it manifests in this moment, in each moment, by surrendering resistance, you purify yourself of yourself. We purify ourselves of ego-based consciousness, of the nafs. This religion, this way, this path is the way of surrender. Spiritual surrender, internal spiritual surrender. It means to become free of resistance because Al-Khalaq is in control. Al-Khalaq is Malakul Mulk. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Lord. Not me, not you, not anything or anyone else. And we must learn to live from a place of internal spiritual surrender, a place of non-resistance, a place of non-violence. And this is the path to purity. This is the path to perfection. This is the prophetic path that Rasulullah taught. And he said, I am not afraid for my nation that they will worship idols. I'm afraid of shirk al-khafi, the hidden shirk, that they will worship themselves. When we operate from a place of non-resistance, we are in effect unconsciously or subconsciously asserting ourselves as gods. Yet through surrender, through the path of humility, through the path of seeing Allah in everything that occurs and surrendering to that, we can awaken. Humility is the doorway to knowledge and to light, to awakening and to spiritual development. Humility is the path to connecting to Allah's divine presence. So in your life, be mindful of what you resist. What do you become angry about? What do you fear? What frustrates you? What creates stress and anxiety in your being? Surrender. Let go of resistance. Let go of time. Learn to be in the present moment. It's the only way to reach to Allah's divine presence. The universe, your life, is a mirror. It reflects to you yourself. It reflects to you aspects of yourself. And it's too easy to lose ourselves in the world of form and appearance by looking outward. But by realizing that the source of our lives originates from within us and learning to look inward and learning to take responsibility, we can begin to transcend our circumstances and move beyond them. What you resist shall persist. Yet you transcend what is unpleasant or unwanted by surrendering to it, by allowing it to simply be internally. This doesn't mean to not act in an appropriate manner, but it means to act from a place of peace and stillness within, from a place of non-resistance internally, from a place that is not based in ego consciousness, from a place that is free of anger and fear and frustration. It means to act from a place of love, from a place of compassion, from a place of wisdom, from a place of clarity, from a place of mercy, to act by and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine light and to allow that to flow through you and into creation. Ya yeah, Allah, we are again reminded of the purpose of consciousness, to surrender the consciousness to the divine light. And subhanAllah, light manifests itself into this universe in so many forms. And one of those forms is inspiration, is that ilham that comes directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into the heart of his creation. And creativity is a divine gift that branches back to the attribute of Al-Khaliq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this power of expression, which encompasses many different modalities, the various artistic mediums from which we can communicate with the world, and more importantly, to understand the universe and our place in it. You know, as a poet, I find this to be very true. You know, several years ago, during a period of seclusion, I had a powerful internal connection with the universe. It's as if I had an intimate conversation with it. I wanted to know what it would say if it could speak. It was an experience that I was able to communicate through the divine gift of poetry. I stand here in awe, willingly stuck in between contemplation and reflection. I experience its pull as I push in closer, my destined direction. Its connection sparked what I have been praying to find. Its jewel is contained by a secret unspoken to the blind. I breathe and move with and within its time I have seen its scars and felt its mind. 
it asked me to reverberate its words to fighters and lovers through their hearts to their minds. A reminder of the forgotten, the call of time, the whispered frequency, the unseen light, guide the soul to manifest, then walk the line. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. SubhanAllah, we've been given with Al-Islam and the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad SAW and the teachings of great spiritual teacher, Shuyukh, Awliyaullah, a divine opportunity to connect and to transcend this world, to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine presence and light oceans beyond time, beyond space, to find out who we truly are, to discover our reality in the divine presence of Allah, to awaken to and to discover a reality beyond death itself, to shift consciousness from the temporal mind and body to the soul which is eternal. In creating humanity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that He breathed from His Spirit into mankind. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed into humanity life. Your breath is a connection to the divine. Each breath is a gift from Al Khalik. Remembering that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating you in every moment that in this moment He is willing and giving you breath as a gift to live, to exist, to be. It's an amazing and powerful doorway into being with Allah and into gratitude. We take over 20,000 breaths per day on average. By learning to be mindful and conscious of our breathing, not only do we come closer to Allah, but our breath itself becomes a form of dhikr and ibadah. Remember that Allah is giving you this breath in this moment. And that He is surrounding you with His light and His love and His protection and His safety. And He's been carrying you your entire life. You can rest. You can relax. You can surrender in this moment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine presence. And learn to trust. Learn to live from a place of faith and belief. And so move forward from Islam into Iman and ultimately inshallah into Ihsan. As a simple practice, simply sit and be. Just be and stop doing for just a moment or a few moments. Learn to begin to meditate. Learn to begin to become present and still to simply be with Allah. Learn to allow the mind to become quiet and still so that the consciousness of your heart can awaken and arise and the means to doing this is to be with your breath for at least a few moments throughout the day, for at least a few breaths. Be with those breaths. Breathe those breaths. Feel those breaths. Shift for just a few moments from thinking to being to feeling. Shift for just a few moments throughout your day from tension and anxiety into peace and surrender, to just simply letting go, to surrendering. By learning to feel and to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, You'll bring infinitely more power and presence into your practice, into your prayers, into your salah, and into all of your ibadah. And this is why the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, an hour of contemplation, one hour of meditation, of reflection, is more valuable than 70 years of worship. Islam is a path of enlightenment and awakening. It's a path of transcending the self and ego-based consciousness. It's a path that leads to the divine presence of Allah. And we must move towards worshipping Allah instead of worshipping creation or even worshipping the path itself, worshipping religion. We must learn to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by being with Allah, by connecting with Allah. Allah is here now. He's closer to you than your jugular vein. Allah is not far. He is near. He's imminent. He's here and He's now. But if we are not here and now, how can we be with Allah? Of all the practices, dhikr, meditation, surrender, stillness, reflection is one of the most or the most powerful way to draw closer to the experience of Allah's divine presence, to being with Allah. And this spiritual dimension is essential in our religion. It's essential in our path. It's essential in our lives. And this, of course, is why we created the Islamic Meditation Program to help our community and members of our community again rediscover the spiritual dimension of Islam. 
the aspect of Islam that connects us to the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that connects us to Allah. It's one thing to know of God, to know about Allah, but it's something else entirely to know Allah. And Allah said, I created to be known, to be found. We're not here just to know about Allah. We're here ultimately to know Allah. And the doorway to Allah's presence is within your own heart, within your own soul, by learning to turn inward. And to learn more about cultivating divine presence in your life and developing a meditative spiritual practice of dhikrullah that will facilitate this process of turning inward, of learning to be still, of learning to surrender, of learning to let go, of transcending time, and of healing from past, and becoming liberated from fear of future, I invite you to visit us at islamicmeditation.com for more information. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and forgive us and lead us all upon Surat al-Mustaqim back to His holy and divine eternal presence. And there's peace and blessings on our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa his family, his companions, his ummah, and all of creation, this entire planet. May Allah fill your lives and our lives with light and with guidance, with goodness and with grace, with barakah, and with peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Let us remind ourselves of this beautiful attribute of the Creator, Al Khaliq. Let us remind ourselves that He is the one who creates everything from nothing, who brings things from a state of non existence to a state of existence. He is the one that has control to take things back and forth between any states. He is the one that has the knowledge of what will happen to them. He is Allah, Al-Khaliq. And this brings us to the end of this episode. Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. Thank you for tuning in, for listening, and for supporting the Soul of Islam radio podcast. Please continue supporting the Soul of Islam Radio by liking us on Facebook, subscribing to this podcast on iTunes, giving us a review, and recommending to your family and friends. And for more information, and if you feel inspired to support this work, you can make a donation on our website at soulofislamradio.com. To learn more about us and our projects, you can visit my website at ahmedsakamini.com and Ihsan's website at ihsanalexander.com To help you in cultivating a state of awareness, divine light, and to be conscious of your breath with every passing moment, please visit islamicmeditation.com Meditation and remembrance and dhikr are such a powerful tool in cleansing the self and bringing it closer to the reality that exists inside of your heart. And with that, may the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.